the problems with the Space Launch System project never seemed to end. A month ago, NASA faced criticism for lack of transparency regarding escalated and uncontrolled costs for its moon rocket. But the trouble doesn't stop there. Another storm's arrived, knocking NASA down once more again. Recently, the Office of Inspector General released a comprehensive 35-page report analyzing NASA's mistakes as they attempted to justify the overall uncertainty of their world's most expensive space program, which arguably should have been eliminated a long time ago. Well, perhaps it's time for SLS to retire and make way for other projects like Starship. So what exactly is the issue with NASA's SLS? Should NASA consider commercial alternatives to SLS? Stay tuned as we get into this and more in today's episode of Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St NASA's Artemis Moon programs facing a challenging situation. Indeed, the crucial component of NASA's Lunar Exploration Program, the Space Launch System or SLS, is on the brink of instability and is likely to be replaced by other rockets. And to report, NASA's Office of the Inspector General OID concluded a 50% reduction in SLS launch costs projected by NASA by moving to a services contract is highly unrealistic, with the vehicle's costs likely to remain above $2 billion for this foreseeable future. The main issue with the SLS rocket is in its performance. Its first launch in the Artemis 1 mission at the end of 2022 was nearly flawless. But the problem is its exorbitant cost. Independent assessments of the vehicle requested by Congress over a decade ago discovered the NASA would find it challenging to sustain a deep space exploration program built around such a cost-heavy lift rocket. The costs associated with these early missions were high. But most believe this was simply the price of space missions. Fast forward to the present and the landscape of the space industry looks vastly different. Government-run space agencies now share the stage with private companies with firms like SpaceX leading the charge in innovation and cost-cutting. Consider NASA's Space Shuttle program, which was used to transport astronauts to the International Space Station. Each of these launches had a hefty cost, estimated at over $1.5 billion. In comparison, SpaceX's Falcon 9, designed for similar missions to the ISS costs about $150 million per launch. This vast difference in costs between government and private ventures has sparked significant debate and questions. Interestingly, the evolution in space technology doesn't stop with SpaceX. There are companies like Relativity Space pioneering the use of 3D printing to develop entire rockets. Yes, you heard that right, 3D printed rockets. Such innovative methods could drive costs down even further. This brings us to NASA's latest project, the Space Launch System, or SLS, intended to be a cornerstone of NASA's lunar missions. It's now under scrutiny due to its rising costs, especially when compared to more cost-effective solutions from private companies. Delving into the report, it's not difficult to discern this high cost. The SLS rocket is equipped with four main engines derived from the Space Shuttle program. The cost of these four engines is $582.7 million, equivalent to 146 million engines. This means that a single engine on NASA's rocket is nearly as expensive as the entire mission cost of the Falcon Heavy rocket, $178 million for the Europa Clipper space mission. That's why the report issued a warning that given the enormous cost of the Artemis campaign, it's crucial that NASA achieve some significant measure of its affordability goals. Failure to do so will significantly hinder the sustainability of NASA's deep space human exploration efforts. And to address the cost issue of the SLS, NASA has a plan in place. In July 2022, NASA expressed its intention to transition to a service contract, called Exploration Production and Operations Contract, EPOC, for missions starting with Artemis V. At the end of the 2020s, that contract would be with Deep Space Transport a joint venture of Boeing and Northrop Grumman, two major contractors for elements of the rocket. With the desire to rapidly reduce the cost of the SLS, they are seeking an opportunity for substantial savings of 50% or more off the current industry baseline per flight cost through this EPOC contract. That report estimates the Block 1B version of SLS to be used starting with Artemis 4 will initially cost $2.5 billion a flight. 
a 50% reduction under EPOC would mean the SLS cost could be reduced by $1.25 billion each. EPIC can also help SLS open the door to using SLS for missions other than the Artemis lunar exploration flights, including non-NASA customers. Initially, it seemed like this was an option by NASA that would help them save the SLS, but according to the OIG report, NASA's cost-saving approach may not be as effective. Furthermore, the report provides convincing factors that NASA's main reasons for cost reduction appear to be based on magical and wishful thinking. While Boeing officials told us they believe the 50% cost reduction goal under EPOC is achievable based on our audit, we find such a goal unfeasible. Boeing, responsible for constructing the core stages of the SLS rocket, encompassing propellant tanks and four main engines, experienced only a marginal 13% reduction in its workforce during the transition from the initial to the second core stage. NASA is facing significant criticism for its lack of transparency, especially concerning the rising and unchecked costs tied to its ambitious SLS project. While criticism is not new to the space agency, the increasing intensity and regularity of these concerns have put many on alert. In today's digital era, with information shared at lightning speed, the public has grown used to a transparency from aerospace companies that NASA seems to be falling behind on. For instance, companies like SpaceX have set new standards for openness. Almost every test or major event at SpaceX's Starbase is live-streamed, offering an unparalleled level of engagement. Not stopping at just broadcasting, SpaceX often allow media personnel and space enthusiasts to set up camp nearby capturing every possible angle and ensuring the public stays informed in real time. This openness from private companies has changed what the public expects from space agencies. Adding to the concerns, the Office of Inspector General recently released a detailed report examining NASA's oversight and decisions related to the SLS. The results were troubling, highlighting repeated errors and too much optimism about the SLS's abilities, longevity and cost-effectiveness. With private firms setting new standards for transparency and efficiency, NASA's traditional approach is under the microscope, pushing the agency to rethink its methods and how it communicates with the public. The primary concern with the SLS doesn't revolve around its performance or capability. Indeed, its inaugural launch in 2022, known as the Artemis I mission, was virtually flawless, even if there was minor damage to the launch tower. The primary concern is its exorbitant cost. About 10 years ago, Congress commissioned an independent assessment to evaluate the fiscal feasibility of NASA's ambitious projects. The findings were quite stark. Based on the projected expenditures for the SLS, the report indicated that NASA would face significant challenges in sustaining a long-term deep space exploration agenda if it continued to depend exclusively on such an expensive heavy-lift rocket. The financial breakdown of the SLS provides a clearer picture of how its funds are allocated. To draw a comparison, the cost of just one of these engines is almost equivalent to the entire launch cost of a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. What's even more notable is when you compare this to SpaceX's Raptor 2 engines, these engines, celebrated for being among the most advanced rocket engines ever crafted, are priced far more competitively, highlighting a significant cost disparity when compared to the engines of the SLS. Amidst rising concerns about the soaring costs, NASA presented a strategic roadmap. Their vision involved transitioning to a service contract system, aptly named the Exploration Production and Operations Contract, or the Exploration Contract. This fresh approach was to kick off with the Artemis V missions scheduled for the latter part of the 2020s, and the driving force behind this initiative was the Deep Space Transport Venture. Furthermore, there's the issue of the SLS's engines. Even though they are the most expensive component of the SLS, the report sees no feasible way to decrease their costs. Efforts to introduce manufacturing efficiencies, such as 3D printing and the use of more affordable materials, haven't delivered the expected cost reductions. To put it simply, imagine trying to switch from brand name to generic products at the grocery store to save money. At first you might think that you'd save a significant amount just by choosing the cheaper option. However, if those generic products don't last as long or don't meet your needs as well, you might end up purchasing them more frequently or supplementing with additional products, 
ultimately not saving as much as you initially thought. In a similar vein, NASA's attempts at cost-cutting for the SLS, even with seemingly promising technologies, haven't translated into the expected savings. The Space Launch System is currently the only rocket that can launch the Orion spacecraft. However, within the next three to five years, alternatives are expected to emerge, with SpaceX's Starship program leading the charge. SpaceX's Starship is designed to be different, unlike the Space Launch System, which has high costs associated with each launch. Starship is being developed as a fully reusable system. This means it can be launched, landed, and then launched again multiple times, potentially reducing the cost of each individual mission. Comparing Starship and SLS directly, the differences are clear. The SLS, though powerful, comes with significant costs. Its economic model seems outdated, especially when newer commercial ventures emphasize efficiency and cost saving. On the other hand, Starship's design prioritizes reusability and aims to have a higher payload capacity than the SLS. If successful, this could lead to more cargo and astronauts being sent to the Moon or Mars at a lower cost. This spaceship is poised to be a game-changer in the space exploration industry. As for the future of the SLS program, it remains uncertain. It could either be phased out or continue to persist, regardless, the likelihood of reducing the overall program costs seems improbable. If you like this video make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe see you in the next video thanks for watching By the way are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door For more information download the Talk Talk app here down below